Microchips are used by everyone every day. A chip starts as a small part of a disc like this and may end up in a product like this. Mobile phones are no longer unusual or expensive. As chips have become smaller and cheaper, so have the phones. For many people they're just an ordinary part of life, much like computers in the office or home. Computers are now capable of better graphics and sound than ever before. The recent explosion in multimedia has only been made possible by newer, faster chips. Microchips are not just inside mobile phones or computers, but in ordinary places like the kitchen, where they control how we cook food or wash clothes. They even control our morning toast. Mondex, a type of banking card controlled by a chip, allows electronic cash to be transferred over a phone to and from the card, whatever the currency. The money can be protected by locking it with a password. The card is not a credit card, but an electronic purse holding cash to pay for everyday items. Paying for a taxi fare becomes simple and quick. The card can be recharged with cash easily at a bank machine or over a phone. It's as convenient as cash, but much more secure. And its current value can be checked at any time. These are all examples of living with the chip. The process of making microchips uses silicon as the raw material. The silicon begins as this, clean silica sand. In this form, silicon is not much use for electrical circuits. It first needs to be purified into pure silicon. It can then conduct electricity, but to make microchips, the silicon must be made into one large, very pure crystal. This crystal is sliced very precisely into wafers and each wafer is used to make many chips. Here in the beautiful Bavarian countryside in southeastern Germany, Hitachi Europe produces microchips from wafers. It has made a huge investment into a semiconductor fabrication plant. The plant is built away from busy traffic to prevent vibration affecting the process. The manufacturing area is a highly controlled and secure environment and only trained personnel are allowed in. The chips are made in super clean conditions. Even what the workers wear affects the manufacture of chips and the nearer someone gets to the process, the cleaner they have to be. The clothes are not to protect people from the chips, but to protect the chips from the dust people would bring into an area which is many times cleaner than a medical operating theater. Everyone must follow the same routine before entering the plant. Managers get no special privileges. It's a little like a surgeon getting ready for work, but this place is much cleaner. Workers must always enter an airlock where clean air blows away any dust particles that might be still left on the clothes. Inside the clean room, to help maintain the dust-free environment, the airflow is carefully controlled. Most of the work is done on a lattice floor above enormous clean air blowers which are supplied and powered by huge air conditioning machines. Well over half the building is used to supply and prepare air for the clean rooms. The specially designed building is two stories high. The working area on the upper floor is only a small part of the total building. Below it are the air conditioning units supporting the strictly controlled environment. Surrounding it on the upper floor are areas providing maintenance access to the fabrication equipment inside the clean room. The environment is carefully controlled as humidity and temperature can also affect the processing of chips. Achieving a stable environment and this level of cleanliness in a large room is very difficult and requires a massive amount of support machinery and infrastructure. All the air used in the working clean room is piped into and away from the area. During this process, it passes through a number of filtration stages to ensure its purity. Returning to what happens to the silicon. A separate plant cuts the crystal into wafers which are delivered in sterile foil-covered cassettes. 
These wafers are the basis of the whole manufacturing process. Now let's look at the steps involved that turn wafers into chips. The silicon wafers are very sensitive to the slightest touch which would cause impurities and working microchips cannot be made where impurities are present on the wafer. For this reason almost all the processing is performed automatically by special machines designed for this exact purpose. The wafers are never touched by human hand. Computers accurately control each process to give high quality but low cost products. The first process uses oxygen fed into an oven to grow a layer of oxide on the silicon. One of the critical factors is the temperature, which must be held at a precise value in order that the thickness of the layer can be controlled. Silicon oxide is a type of glass that makes an excellent insulator to cover the wafers, which at this stage look and feel like metal discs. The discs are heated while oxygen is passed over them to produce a layer of oxide on one side of the wafer. The layer is grown slowly to precisely control the thickness, which is only a few microns, that is, a few thousandths of a millimetre thick. A layer of polysilicon is grown on top of the oxide to be used as a conductor connecting the circuit components together. Polysilicon is a form of silicon which conducts electricity, but while it's very pure, it's not a crystal, so it's only used as a connector between circuit components. With the oxidation complete, the wafers are now ready to begin the processes which will add the pattern or circuit and turn them into a microchip. Again, to avoid damage, the wafers are transferred using robotic arms. This is done without touching the active side of the wafer. The fine lines on a chip are developed like the fine lines in a photograph, in a process called photolithography. Because this requires ultraviolet light, only yellow light is allowed in the photolithography area as it doesn't affect the process. Photolithography is crucial to making chips and occurs a number of times during the manufacturing of a wafer. Here the wafers are prepared for photolithography. Then the wafers are automatically loaded into a machine which exposes small squares of the wafer to ultraviolet light. By repeating this process, an array of identical patterns is built up. Each of these patterns will eventually become a single chip. To prepare the wafers for the pattern, first a layer of photoresist shown in blue is sprayed on. Photoresist is used to reproduce the pattern on the wafer. Ultraviolet light is shone through a kind of stencil called a mask to put down the fine patterns onto the silicon. Where the ultraviolet light hits the photoresist, it softens up, ready to be rinsed off later. Using these masks, it is possible to produce patterns with lines that are only a hundredth of the width of a human hair. This level of precision is needed to produce today's microchips. The wafer is then rinsed by a solvent to dissolve away the soft photoresist, exposing the polysilicon layer underneath. The pattern from the mask has now been repeated on the wafer in the photoresist. At every stage, a number of random samples are rigorously inspected. These inspections may use a microscope or even an electron microscope to look at the fine detail on the wafer. Back in the manufacturing process, the photoresist has now been removed and the wafer is now ready for etching. The process of adding layers of silicon oxide, polysilicon and photoresist to the wafer is so that a pattern of silicon can be exposed and therefore treated while the rest is insulated. Strong acid washes away the polysilicon and silicon oxide layers not protected by photoresist. This is called etching and is the last process that finally exposes the silicon again. The old hardened photoresist is now removed with a solvent, as it has done its job. This is another carefully controlled process, particularly as the chemical use could be dangerous. 
Again, the handling of the wafers during this process is fully automated. You can already see that there are a large number of processes involved in making microchips and careful monitoring of where each batch of wafers is in the manufacturing cycle is very important. Photolithography and etching are used to build up the many layers needed in a complex chip. The secret to how a chip works depends on how these different layers affect each other and a number of repeats of these processes is necessary to build up the many layers. The silicon is then bombarded with high-speed electrically charged atoms called ions. This process is particularly precise and must be carried out in a highly controlled environment. The circuits are interconnected with extremely fine aluminium contacts, which are deposited in a process called sputtering. This illustrates a process greatly magnified for just one memory cell. What you see here is in fact less than one thousandth of a millimetre across. On a typical chip, there will be over 18 million of these cells, and there could be hundreds of chips on a single wafer. The wafers are now ready for testing and cutting. The entire manufacturing process is automated whenever possible and throughout the whole operation the wafers are protected when handled manually. Each wafer has many chips but the wafers still look and feel like metal discs. The individual chips are separated by using a precision diamond saw. The sawing machine must be able to cut along very fine lines without chipping the silicon or damaging the chips through overheating. Nothing is left to chance and the equipment used is highly specialized and computer controlled. After cutting, the wafer is rinsed thoroughly. As before, this process is carefully controlled by computer and wafers sample tested at every stage. Here a wafer is being visually inspected for defects. Until now, all stages of manufacture have been carried out on the wafer. From now on, the chips are processed individually. Only chips which have passed the rigorous inspection process are selected from the wafer and are then transferred onto a metal lead frame. This frame will form the legs of the final packaged chip and its connections to the outside world. The next stage is called wire bonding. Here the leads are bonded to the chip with fine gold thread. Gold thread is needed because it's a good conductor and it can be drawn very finely. Because of the number of leads that need to be fixed to each chip and the fact that millions of chips are produced, the bonding process needs to be very quick. It also needs to be very accurate. This is achieved by using cameras and pattern recognition equipment to guide the head to the exact location of the bonding pad. The complex wire bonding process takes only a few seconds for each chip before the machine automatically moves on to the next. Samples of every batch are inspected to ensure the bonding process is producing reliable connections. During the manufacturing process, each chip is marked with identifiers. This particular device is a memory chip. The final product could be memory chips for personal computers. Chips must withstand a wide range of operating temperatures. Here they're being baked in an oven to weed out the faulty chips. Subjecting them to very high temperatures will encourage any imperfect devices to fail. Finally, the highly complex electrical functions of the chips are fully tested. The manufacturing process is now complete. The chips are then packaged, ready for distribution to Hitachi's customers. Hitachi's chip fabrication plant in Germany represents a massive investment in the future of European chip manufacture. An investment that Hitachi is building on continually. Many different types of microchips are made here and each process requires highly skilled personnel to guarantee the quality demanded by you and I in products we use every day.
products which are used in Europe and throughout the world. Whether we are aware of it or not, we use chips all the time. Hitachi is making sure that we can all take advantage of new technology in our everyday lives and that we can continue living with the chip.